I got an idea. Take some rich suckers for a ride. Got a warrant. How are you here, Ray? Ma'am. It's not important. What's happening, YouTube peeps? This is going to be the Ray Donovan Season 7, Episode 4 review. Be careful for spoilers. If you haven't seen it, we're just going to break everything down. And we're going to do this review from the perspective of each individual character, as a lot of things we talked about in the last review happened in this episode. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notifications so when I drop videos, you all get them. Be sure to follow me on all my social media links in case I ever have to change channels or disappear from YouTube. And if you're into buying YouTuber merch, check out the things we sell at shoplifegames.com. We're going to jump into this starting from the perspective of Bunchy. The episode starts out with Bunch at the hospital viewing the kid that he shot and the mom comes out and she's trying to get a drink and it won't take her dollar and Bunch caught up in his feelings goes over there fixes the thing puts the dollar in and gives her the drink she turns around and realizes who he is and she is livid. She can't believe that this man shot her baby in the back and she's pushing him and eventually a security guard comes over calms her down another security guard takes her away bunch goes and sits beside this particular security guard who says he did the right thing in intervening and shooting the kid you had to know that was a setup for something that security guard slips bunch a card for the kkk of new york and throughout this episode Bunch is in his feelings, he's debating, he eventually goes to this meeting, and the whole time me and my wife are sitting here thinking, okay Bunch, you're at a racist meeting when your baby mama is Hispanic, you have a child by this woman which makes your child half Hispanic, how in the world are you going to be in your feelings and go to this rally and stay there, and eventually Bunch comes back to his feelings and understands, okay, I don't need to have anything to do with this winds up punching the security guard and i'm just wondering where are they going to take his character the rest of this season with him being in his feelings and if they're going to bring back his baby mama who i love that actress she played in army wives and when she needs to bring it she can bring it and i want him to see his kid again we'll go to mickey now i made a prediction in the last episode that we wasn't going to see mickey gone forever I thought they would at least string it out for a couple of episodes, but his ass came back this episode. And it starts out with Mickey being on an island where it looks like they're having an LGBTQ um, event. Now that's funny for Mick because y'all know he has some kind of a weird feeling about African Americans, even though he has a sexual predilection for them big booty black women. And he's there with these gay dudes. Mickey character is one of a man's man. He's an old guy that's hardcore, old school. So it was kind of, I think, a comic relief to see Mickey in that environment. Throughout the time he's there, he's getting more and more frustrated. He wants to come home. He winds up calling Sandy with another elaborate scheme to make money, ladies and gentlemen. You knew that once a con man, always a con man. That's what Mickey is, and he's never going to change. And he comes up with a scheme, and he winds up back in New York by the end of the episode to pick up Daryl, the dumbest of the Donovans. I hate that he's black because that falls in all kinds of crazy stereotypes, but hey, it is what it is. And I've also said in the last review that Daryl was going to be the one that's going to bring this family down if they get caught. And it looks like that's what's going to happen with the connection between Mickey and Daryl. And Mickey also calls Sandy, who we'll briefly talk about her, and her being the comic relief of this season. From that rat tail that she's kept from 1975 to her telling Mickey, I want to show off my bathing suit. And Mickey's like, yeah, sure, you can do it. He calls Sandy, gives her the elaborate scheme of pulling off this money heist. But in the midst of all this, Ray employs Sandy to go to a bank to give cover for him to make a transaction on behalf of the Sullivan's father. And so she keeps a coin that she takes out of that vault and she shows it to Mickey when she gets out to the island with Mickey. And that right there was the thing that pushed Mickey to say, we need to come back. He's got some kind of a plan he 
He knows the Sullivan's father. I'm not quite sure what that connection is, but Mickey knows them. And somehow, someway, Mickey is gonna come up with a new plot that we know Ray is gonna have to save him from. Then we go ahead and careen to Daryl. We find Daryl in the beginning of the episode having sex with that girl that he just met on episode one, contemplating everything, thinking about life. And as the girl is getting ready to leave, his mom Claudette pops in and the girl is kind of looking like, looking at Daryl like, you mama's boy. Why your mama popping up in here? And Claudette lets her know that I'm his mother, not some jump off. Claudette tells Daryl, why not just come back with me where I live at? You know, my current husband can give you a job and tells Daryl that the husband is gonna call, call him, which the husband does, offers Daryl a job paying 75 grand, basically doing nothing. And so Daryl is thinking about it. And throughout the episode, Daryl's contemplating, should he do it, should he not do it? He goes and has the audacity to ask Bunchy, is this something he should do? Bunchy gave him good advice and said, you know, why you want to be like us? You should go do it. So at that point in time, I'm feeling like Daryl is going to go ahead. He's going to take off and he's going to go with Claudette, his mom, and take this job and go. But as we just mentioned at the end of the episode, Mickey pops back up into Daryl's life, sprinkles sweet nothings on that dumb Daryl, and Daryl is ready to take off with Mickey. But before that happens, Mickey and Claudette have a sit down. She basically says, you know, I'm not feeling you coming back. You're probably gonna hurt my son. But in, in essence, she gives Mickey the blessing to take her son. And as Mickey and Daryl are getting away in a car, what does Claudette do? She calls Detective Perry to let her know that Mickey Donovan is still alive. And I'm just like, why? Are you so mad at Mickey that you want him to get your son in trouble? Or is she under the impression that by ratting on Mickey, it's gonna save the son? We'll just have to see how that goes. But we knew that Detective Perry wasn't gonna be done with this. And now I wonder if Claudette is gonna be killed because Ray Donovan and the crew don't really care for her anyway. And if they find out that she ratted on Mickey, they are probably gonna wanna off her. We'll move on to Bridget, who is coming into her own in this story. She is basically, she seems like she's filling the void where Lena is gone. And her little boy toy friend, who's the manager for Jonathan, I wanna be Justin Bieber, gives her a call and says, he's giving all these housewives herpes. And Bridget is like, did you call Ray? Well, no, he hadn't called Ray. Ray's not picking up the phone. Ray's got his own issues going on at the moment. So she comes up with an elaborate plot involving Smitty, and they go and switch out Smitty for Jonathan to get him out of the crowd. And then they come up with a PR stunt where Smitty says, instead of calling it herpes, let's take ownership of this as a man, and let's call it hispies. Instead of herpes, his peas. I thought that was very funny, and that was also the title of this particular episode. And it just basically shows how if something were to happen to Ray Donovan, maybe Bridge can continue this story, even though she's not as stoic as Ray Donovan. It just shows you what they're doing with her character, how they're trying to evolve her character. And I thought that was good on her behalf to involve Smitty. And along with her character, in this episode, she also told Jonathan's manager that they're done. Because I guess Smitty, through all his begging of, is it sex, is it me? She realizes that he might be a better choice for her because he is understanding. He's trying to figure out what she needs from a husband. And so I think she had an awakening, but we'll just have to see because I don't see Jonathan's manager going away from Bridget without a fight because he seems like he really likes Bridget. Then we move on to Terry. And what are they doing with Terry's story? He's still at this retreat. And he got caught in his feelings because he walks into the lady that invited him to the retreat. She's butterball naked, doing a meditation or whatever she was doing. And Terry's like, I'm gonna leave. She says, you can stay. And Terry says, well, should I get naked? She's like, you can get naked if you want to. And I don't know no man that if a woman who has a physique like her says, I can get naked, he's getting naked. 
So he gets naked, he tries to smash, and his current Parkinson's disorder won't allow him to get it up and perform. And so he is upset about that. And she seems to be pretty cool. You know, she seems like an understanding woman. She was like, well, we can just cuddle, we can meditate. And men, you know good and damn well, we don't want to sit there and cuddle. We frustrated, you know. Um, our stuff working and performing ties right into our ego and our psyche and our confidence. And this man is so wrecked, he's thinking about going out there committing suicide. Until a lady who had cancer prevented him from walking all the way in that water and dying. At the end, you also see Terry talking to the guy who's the head of this organization. And it just leaves me more questions. Where are they going with this, with his story? And how is it gonna tie into everything else that's going on in Ray Donovan season seven? And last, my man Ray. The first time we see Ray, Ed Ferrati sends his people in there looking for that scan drive that has the Sullivan guy getting hair from an underage kid. And they go through Ray's office, they beat him down, detain him, search for it, he doesn't have it. And then he winds up meeting up with Molly and he asked Molly, did they get it from you? She said, no. And so Molly drops the bug on him that, Ray drops the bug on Molly about what Ed wants. And Molly says, my father has a safe deposit box that has these things in them. He won't let me go and get them. He wants me to let you do it, Ray. And Ray tells her that if you go, the feds are gonna be on you, everybody's gonna be on you, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so Molly gives Ray the safe deposit box key. Ray calls up Sandy, has her go in there first, grabs the stuff, Ray pops in before she can get out, and they do a quick interchange. Ray gets the items, comes back, drops these items off to Ed Ferrati. And inside the, the box was, looks like some $500,000 treasury notes from back in the day. Ed Ferrati seems like he's cool with the situation. Ray goes back and lets Molly know everything's co-pathetic. And as I said, I knew just by the look of Ray in the last episode that Molly was gonna give up them panty draws and we knew Ray was gonna get some and that's how they ended this particular episode with Ray and Molly getting it in. Now you guys know that this story is not over. There's gonna be so much more going on with this story and you just wonder now that the mayor seems like he's happy, we know he's not really happy, what's gonna be next with him? At some point in time, Smitty is gonna find out about Jonathan's manager having the hots for Bridget. And I believe Smitty is gonna be the type of dude that's gonna crack up and do something crazy. So I want you guys to leave me your comments about what you think so far, um, what do you think is gonna happen in the future, and what else you're watching so that I can keep these reviews coming. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe. Go get yourself that life gain. Go check out shoplifegains.com if you're into buying YouTuber merch. And if you'd like to donate to a brother's Patreon or his cash link, link is in the video description. Until the next sex is hell video, I'll see you.